Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to shake our opponent's eyeballs with some of the best traps that you can try out against the Rui Lopez. So yesterday, on 20th January 2023, I released a video where I was showing you how to correctly play against the Rui Lopez using some fishing pole traps. If you didn't watch that video, I can tell you that you are really missing out, you guys. You need to watch that video after watching this one. Anyways, the link is in the description down below or in the card above. All right, now let's look at some more deadly traps that we can try out against the Spanish players. All right, let's go. So white begins with pawn to e4, then you go e5, knight f3, knight c6. By the way, the trap that I'm about to show you guys is one that will give you much confidence to face the Rui Lopez. You will never be scared of the Rui Lopez again once you master this trap, you guys. So they play bishop b5 and then you go a6, the main move. Knight to f6 before a6 is also playable. It's called the Berlin defense, my favorite. But anyways, pawn to a6 is the main line, okay? And I guess by this time we already know what to do after bishop takes c6, which is rarely played. The move that you're going to see once again is bishop a4 in this position. Now wait a second. In this position, almost everything that you play is sensible. For example, pawn to d6. I mean, if you really want your Noah's Ark trap to work, consider playing this pawn to d6 move here. The idea is just to develop our light squared bishop to e6 as quickly as we can or just play bishop g4 pinning this knight to white screen on d1. So that's why d6 is more flexible in this position you guys. There are two most popular moves here, pawn to d4 or castling shot, okay? But the Noah's Ark happens when white plays pawn to d4 immediately wanting to destroy our center, I mean before they cast a shot. So the only point to remember here is d4 equals to pawn to b5. At least in most of these positions, the aim is to unpin our knight and take on d4 or e5 later on. Let me show you. After pawn to d4, we go pawn to b5, right? Attacking this bishop. So they have to play bishop b3 and that's when we take with our knight on d4. They obviously have to take back with their knight and then we take back on d4. Now wait a second. Our idea here is just to play pawn to c5 and maintain our solid pawn structure on the center. But the top played move in this position is actually takes d4 which is a blunder in case you didn't know. This is only the 8th move of the game and white has already lost because of this move pawn to c5. The idea is just to trap this light squared bishop right here but if white thinks he can counter attack with the move queen d5 attacking our undefended rook on a8. Well, we have bishop e6 attacking the queen first. And after they play queen c6 check, that's when we go bishop d7 once again attacking the queen. And this time it doesn't even matter where white puts his queen. Cause the next move will be to win the light squared bishop. The best they can do is to take the pawn and then take the other pawn. Then we play bishop e7 and our plans are very simple. Knight to f6 castle shot. We also have other moves like queen a5 check and bishop b5 attacking the queen. Later on in the future we have rook c8 also. So from here we are going to have a great game. That's what we call the Noah's Ark trap which is enough to inspire you to start playing this defense against the Rui Lopez. If things don't go your way, don't worry. The Rui Lopez is a positional game where you don't expect to meet your opponent in 7 or 8 moves. Your concentration should just be to strengthen your center and play from the sides of the board, precisely the queen side. Just make sure that your pieces are well developed and that they are placed on the most active squares. Let's look at another interesting trap against the Rui Lopez which you can try out. You see that like button which is closer to your thumb? I mean, do that need for you guys. Hit that like button to continue encouraging me to keep on making these wonderful videos. And if at all you are not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing to my channel in order to encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one. You can do that in less than four or five seconds during this break. Don't go away. I'm about to show you something more extraordinary. The trap that I'm about to show you guys is actually my favorite. This is where white begins with pawn to e4, then you go e5, knight f3, knight c6, I mean bishop b5, 
the Rui Lopez. Now, it was in this position where I said, pawn to a6 or knight f6 is okay, but pawn to a6 leads to the Noah's Ark trap. And we just saw how that goes. So the move that I'm recommending here is knight to f6, called the Berlin defense. And in this position, there are only two common moves that make sense here. Castling long or just playing pawn to d3. Wait a second. Castling long may lead to what we call the fishing pot trap where white plays pawn to h3. We go h5 so that if they take, we take on g4. And then let's say if something like knight e1, you go queen h5. And then there's an avoidable checkmate here. If pawn to f4, we go g3, ensuring the white king does not escape so that we can now mate on h1. This is a very common trap. And it's not what we are interested in when we play the Berlin defense right here. But that's just one way you can play this if things don't go your way. But the move that I'm interested in is pawn to d3, which is popular at club level. Advanced players, intermediate level players, and even beginners play this move very often. So the move that I recommend here is knight e7. Preparing to put our queen's knight to g6, okay? So that later on, one of our knights will sit on the juicy f4 square. You already know this plan if at all you are a keen follower of my content. The dark squad bishop will be developed to c5, will cast a shot, etc. So, knight e7. And here the best that white can do is to cast a shot. Otherwise, if they think that this pawn on e5 is a free pawn, well, it is time for you to ask them in a polite way to pack their bag and go home. Otherwise, if they don't, we can simply shake their eyeballs by playing pawn to c6 and this will definitely win a free piece. Trust me, you guys. The common move here is bishop a4, after which we play Casper's signature move, queen a5 check which happens to be a triple fork by the way the king is under attack the bishop is under attack and the knight is under attack the best that white does here is to play c3 indirectly defending his bishop on a4 that's when we take the free knight on e5 now wait a second you might think this is very good for you but you still need to be very careful white has got moves such as pawn to a4 the easiest here is to go for an immediate queen trade, okay? You keep it so simple. Kiss. See, due to white's solid center here, with the help of the white queen, white may equalize the game if you are not careful. And I have lost a number of games even while having a piece up in this same position because of just this massive pawn structure on the center. So just simplify the game very much here. Go queen h5 to trade off queens. Once the queens are out on the board, at least you are assured of entering the end game with a piece up, okay? The next move that you'll be thinking about is pawn to d5. Let me just show you. Now, if white plays queen d2, they don't want to exchange queens because they understand that they don't have to oversimplify the game. This is when you can now go pawn to d5. If they take, that will be good for you. You take back with your e knight, okay? Your knight which is on e7 and pave way for your dark squad bishop. But this pawn to d5 is a very good move in that it hits on the center, that's one. In order to create some light square weaknesses, let me show you. If white plays pawn to d5 here, which they are going to do, now there are so many light square weaknesses in this position. And now you simply play knight g4 since your knight was under attack. If pawn to h3, that would be a wasted move because we have queen h4 check on the king. If they play bishop d1, pinning your knight to the queen, well, you have knight f5 first. By the way, queen h4 is also playable, but because of pawn to g3, just go knight f5 here. This is a tricky way of playing against the Ruy Lopez. Look, we simply want to put our knight on g3 so that if h takes g3, we take the free rook on h1. We also have another idea of putting our knight on e3. So white has to be extra careful. For example, if they play pawn to d4 here, for whatever reasons, we can simply go knight g3 attacking this rook. And if you think this is easy to solve, watch. Bishop takes g4 may be played. Well, we just simply take back with our bishop and after rook g1, we simply take the free pawn on h2 and we are winning. Next, we'll play bishop e7 and bring this bishop into the game. So this is just the right way of continuing to play this 
so-called Mortimer trap after you win a free night. Don't start overcomplicating things. Just keep in mind that White can bounce back with this huge pawn formation on the center. So be careful. Now, it was in this position where we saw White playing pawn to d4 for whatever reasons. They can also play something like pawn to g3 here. After this, well, I recommend you just unpin your knight. And if they play bishop f3, maybe try to sit on g1. Look at this move, you guys. Knight h4. The idea is that if they take your knight, you simply take their bishop. And this also stops bishop g2, okay? So if they take your other knight on g4 instead, you take back with your bishop. And if they take your knight on h4, now you go bishop e7 you now see that this bishop can come into the game threatening to checkmate white or maybe trying to win their queen let's say if they play rook g1 you go bishop takes h4 check the only sensible move is rook g3 after which you take that rook and after pawn takes you go queen h1 king f2 only sensible move you go queen h2 check if king e1 is played there's a mate with queen g1 so they have to play king e3 after which you go queen g1 check anyways and the only move here is queen f2 blocking the check after which you take this dark sword bishop so this is the right way of continuing to play your mortimer trap after winning a free knight but not so fast don't skip this video let me show you what you shouldn't do in the mortimer trap so white played knight f3 and you just played knight c6 then they play bishop b5 still in the berlin defense where white plays pawn to d3 instead of castling short wait a second here it looks like white will always fall for your mortimer trap after you play pawn to c6 the best white can do is just to take your pawn on f7 at least saving their bishop this will give you a slight advantage i mean but still playable for white they are down a piece i mean what else but i've seen some people losing after white's clever move knight c4 stopping queen a5 check you guys be aware of this move c takes b5 is a very big blunder as it hangs mating one after knight d6 checkmate so you need to be very careful whenever you see knight c4 instead of bishop a4 knight c4 don't take the bishop no just go knight g6 so that if knight d6 comes this won't be checkmate it will be met with bishop takes d6 so they'll have to play something like pawn to e5 maybe or bishop a4 if they play bishop a4 that's when you now go pawn to b5 double attacking their minor pieces and you'll be sure to win one piece here for free okay Again, you start looking for ways to trade your queens and oversimplify your game. For example, they can go e5, you go knight d5. There's just nothing that white can do here. But let's just say after you play knight g6 instead of taking on b5, if they don't play bishop a4 and instead play an immediate pawn to e5, attacking your knight, you always have knight d5. Okay, again, if they go bishop a4, you can go pawn to b5, double attacking their minor pieces. So let's say they play queen f3, another tactical move so that, I mean, if you take, they then take your knight. This doesn't work because you end up winning two minor pieces and they'll only get your knight, okay? So don't worry about that. Even if they start with knight d6 check first before taking your knight, well, you just take back. I mean, if they take your knight, you just simply take their pawn on e5 with your bishop and you are good to go. You are up a piece. So be very much alert with this move, knight to c4. Be very careful as you may end up hanging met in one which is not good and your eyeballs will be shaken all right you guys so this is just about the most important stuff that you needed to know in the royal lopez or against the royal lopez and i'm sure these traps that i just showed you will give you much confidence to face the royal lopez that's the idea by wanting to try out these traps you will be learning how to respond against the royal lopez correctly with these few words, thank you for watching my video and hope to see you in my next video.